Drone Apocalypse or <laughs> the reason I surrendered more liberty to the state. My name is Paul Gordon. I am here with PG Fire at pgfire.tv, and this is your commentary for the day. Today, we're going to look at the topic of drones. And I want to start off by saying they can take our drones, but they can't take our, wait a second, take our freedom too. So I want to, I'll show you a little a screenshot here before I get this thing started. And right there it is. You see that, uh, security, security, security. You see what happens there? That's what we're going to be talking about in this article. So we'll start off with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little a temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Aggressive force is like water. It travels the path of least resistance. The less resistance aggressive force faces, the greater the tendency of aggressive force to rush in. The government, the state, the coercive enterprise applies aggressive force often to influence the action of others, even influencing the action of others who've done absolutely no harm to anyone else. So a friend of mine, one who identifies himself as actually being in the libertarian range of political views, recently shared a link to a story about an ISIS fanatic that it had planned on using a drone to crash into a U.S. Air Force plane. So Turkish police, they essentially, they arrested Rena Bakyav, a Russian national and self-identified, according to Turkish police, ISIS member right before he was about ready to use a drone to attack a U.S. jet coming out of Inkerlink Air Force Base. According to the Turkish independent news agency, Dogen, Turkish police met the decision, or excuse me, made the decision to arrest Bakiev after surveillance showed him apparently scouting the area around the base in preparation for his attack. Now, he also planned uh, drone assaults uh, against a nearby community of people called Alevis, whom ISIS has cleverly identified as heretics. The story itself brought up some concerns to my friend about the current state of affairs of U.S. law regarding drones. My friend stated in regard to this story, and this is a quote, This is a bigger problem that we realize. Incredible drone technology products are now sold virtually everywhere to anyone, are inexpensive, and only going to get lower in price with better features. HD cameras to record, spy, track, and able to deliver weapons and bombs. They should be banned, and banned is emphasized, capitalized, banned, and not available past a certain technology threshold to the public and limited to use on purple pur pur <laughs> purple, purple property only. No, on, on personal property only. Now, now, I'm not picking on my friend here, but his response to drones and the potential threats that they represent is, is actually not unique. And it's a sentiment, sentiment that I've actually seen from a number of people, a sentiment that, I, 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 from what I've seen, seems to cross boundaries from the progressive side of the American political spectrum to the libertarian side of the American political spectrum. And I would actually say I see it more in the conservative circles than anywhere else. Now I have no doubt, knowing that my friend, knowing my friend as I do, that uh, he believes that he's taking a pragmatic approach to a problem within the framework of the reality of power around him. He's weighing out the need for security with the need for individual liberty, and here he is deciding that security needs are actually more pressing than 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 liberty needs. Unfortunately. So one of the sources of his frustration lies in the fact that the FAA will not allow you to shoot down a drone if you feel that 
drone is threatening you, even if you know for a fact that that drone is being used to film you on your property. And this is uh, an excerpt from a Forbes article. By the way, if you go to iState.tv, you'll find this article on the front of the site, and you can also find a link to the article uh, below in the description in this video. So this is from Forbes. According to Loretta Alcala, an aviation attorney who teaches drone law. Dude, he teaches drone law. Uh, Loretta teaches drone law. That's a sweet gig. At Vaughan College of Aeronautics and Technology, the statute also prohibits interfering with anyone, quote, engaged in the authorized operation of such aircraft, unquote, and carries a penalty of up to 20 years in prison. That's right, in prison. Since drones are considered aircraft, threatening a drone or a drone operator, according to Miss Alcala, would also be a federal crime subject to five years in prison under this same statute. So, so I understand where my friend is coming from on, on this point. So on one hand, the FAA, FAA won't resist, restrict drug use, uh, <laughs> drug use. They will restrict drone use, or they won't restrict drone use. I, don't, I hope the FFA, FAA is not restricting drug use. So on the other hand, though, even as they're not restricting drone use, the FAA might very well criminally prosecute you if you shoot down a drone that's spying on you or otherwise menacing you. Now, let's be clear, folks. When we say, and I'll put this in air quotes, criminally po prosecute, we mean that they will send out armed people to threaten to shoot you first implicitly and then explicitly if you do not voluntarily come with them to face prosecution for daring to defend your home. And uh, let's get back to the story that triggered my friend's response. And this story it had nothing whatsoever to do with a person using their drone to spy on another person's property. This story was about using drones to do violent things. And on a show that I do with another friend of mine who goes by Professor Rambo on the show, and, and those of you who follow what I do, I'm sure you've seen it, Full Auto, uh, we actually discussed some of these security issues. Drones can be used to assassinate people. They can, be, they can bomb places, and yes, they could be used to attack planes, including commercial airlines. I don't think that anyone can deny that drones present bona fide security issues. Now, first, I would like to address the potential dangers of drones becoming weapons in the hands of bad actors, be they criminals, terrorists, Angry actors exacting revenge or homicidal maniacs that just want to kill as many people as they can. Now, I will address this issue. I think by, I'm well, I don't think, I know. I'm going to use the gun debate as my starting point. And the argument against assault-style weapons being legal is that madmen can get a hold of these weapons and kill a lot of people in a short period of time. Now, why would you not want to at least have some common sense gun laws that prevent madmen from getting guns? I mean, this is reasonable, right? All we have to do is have some laws that don't allow crazy people to get dangerous guns. And I'm going to come back to this. Right now, I'm going to, I'm going to put a pin in it. And we're going to come back to this. So, of course, if, you, if you'd rather not try and deal with the mess of figuring out just what defines a crazy person or a madman or a woman or other gendered mad person, for that matter, then you can just support banning those types of guns altogether. And this position seems to be the one that my friend is taking. Rather than even attempting to look at categories of people who can have the type of advanced drone technology that would make such dangerous weapons, weaponizations possible, my friend is essentially supporting that I, the idea that only one, one class of people be allowed to have that advanced level of drone technology. And those people would be agents of the government, the state, uh, the course of enterprise. 
So let's address the threat issue that my friend seems to worry about. How likely are you really to be the victim of a mass shooting or even a terrorist attack? Now, here is an interesting perspective on the risk of being involved in a terrorist attack in America today. And this comes to us from, from Business Insider. And we'll have the, the, the links will be below in the description of this video. According to a September 2016 study by Alex Noroshta at the Cato Institute, a libertarian think tank, some 3,024 Americans died from 1974 through 2015 due to foreign-born terrorism. That number includes the 911 terrorist attacks, 2,983 people, and averages nearly 74 Americans per year. Since 911, however, foreign-born terrorists have killed roughly one American per year. Six Americans have died per year at the hands, guns, and bombs of Islamic terrorists, foreign and domestic. And this is, this is a quote here coming up from, from this article. I once asked a guy at the National Institute of Health how much we should spend on preventing a disease that kills six per year. And he looked at me like I was crazy. John Mueller, a foreign policy expert at The Ohio State University and co-author of the book Chasing Ghosts, The Policing of Terrorism, told Business Insider in an email. Exactly. And, and he would have good reason to say that. How about being a victim of a mass shooting? Well, again, the hype about the security risk may be a tad overblown. And this comes to us from Princeton University. And again, we'll have, we'll have the link below in the description. So at a conservative estimate, there have been five mass shootings in the U.S. this year. San Bernardino, 14 dead. Oregon, 10 dead. Charleston, 9 dead. Chattanooga, 5 dead. And Colorado, 3 dead. Of the five shootings, two are related to Islam Islamist terrorism. Two to what I would consider, this is them writing, not me, I would consider right-wing extremist terrorism, Colorado and Charleston, and one Oregon to who knows what craziness. Actually, the one in Oregon is, is definitely leftist uh, of, of orientation. By this reckoning, this year there was a 40% chance of a mass shooting being related to Islamist terrorism, and 46% of the people killed in mass shootings were killed by Islamist terrorists. But still, more people were killed by non-Muslim white American men than were killed by Muslims. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up to the key part here. Uh, now, that's a large percentage, they say, but a, of a tiny number of events. And by these standards, my odds increasingly significantly are... And by these standards, my odds increase significantly. And I have a... I'm going I'm to point... And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six zeros, and then one three. So point zero 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 one three percent chance of being killed in a mass shooting. So take that in. You have a point blah 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 blah. Whatever. All those zeros. That's that's what you're facing here. That's the chance that you're gonna be, be facing a mass shooting. Now to be sure. Drones prevent security challenges, but do they represent a fundamental risk to Americans? Based on the statistics above regarding mass shootings and terrorist attacks, I'd say the answer is definitively no. So, for the sake of a uh, minute risk to his security, my friend is essentially advocating for depriving everyone else the ability to access the same technology he sees no problem allowing agents of government, the state, the course of enterprise to access. He is, in essence, in favor of increasing the state's monopoly of power over all of the people who are not agents of government, the state, the course of enterprise. Now, remember when I told you I was going to put a pin in something earlier? I'm going to come back to that now. So I'm coming back to the scenario I painted above about the need to at least have common sense gun laws keeping dangerous guns out of the hands of madmen. If my friend were to retreat to a position not to outright ban technology, but to limit who can get it, then my friend is advocating for empowering the state to define what a madman is, what a dangerous person is. Now, I, for one, would rather risk being confronted with a madman with a gun than empowering the government, the state, the coercive enterprise, and its state agents that give it the power it has to define what a madman is. Now, for today, 
The madman is someone I clearly recognize as mad. But tomorrow, I am the madman because I don't express views that the state defines as normal. The second part of my friend's concern lies with people flying drones over your property to invade your personal space. And this is, this is a real legitimate concern. Because as the law exists today, uh, and I'll include, uh, again, links are, are below in the description to the FFA, FAA story that I cited. The government, the state, the coercive enterprise will protect the drone owner over the property owner. Shooting down a drone could trigger an armed response by the state to encourage you to peacefully go along with proceedings that could end with you being kidnapped and caged while the drone operator goes free. In other words, the state will utilize aggressive force to significantly, I mean significantly, influence your actions. Remember, you, you still have free choice. You could choose to face a, a more lethal threat. Of course, I'm not in support of people using drones to spy on me. I am also not in support of laws that create a significant threat deterrence against my potential choice to meet the drone threat with force. But being against laws that prevent one action of individual liberty shouldn't then trigger you to suddenly support the creation of other laws that prevent actions of individual liberty. Life, my friends, is competition. Sometimes that competition is dangerous. Any potential power to limit individual action that you grant to the domain of the government, the state, the coercive enterprise exists, the uh, exits, the free and open exchange of competition and, and actually becomes an artificial monopoly on action and in, as enforced through a monopoly of power that the state actually holds over you. And when most Americans think of the Second Amendment, they think of guns and nothing else. While I don't derive my natural human tendency to prefer to protect myself from threats of force, no matter who or what is threatening me from anything written on a piece of paper, many of the people, my friend included, now advocate for some form of government regulation of uh, that now advocating for some form of government regulation of drones are defying the very standards they ostensibly support when they fall back on the Second Amendment as the source for their right to bear arms. Now, the Second Amendment is ostensibly not so much about being able to own and carry guns. It's more essentially about the right to defend yourself from all threats, foreign, domestic, non-government actors, state agents, etc., bears, whatever. To defend yourself in the year that this article is being written, 2017, there are multiple tools that will enable you to do so. Tools that will equip you to meet the threat posed by the tools that aggressors would now use against you, including drones. I, 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 I personally have little doubt that a market that is not checked by laws and regulations intended to protect ideologies, fear of competition, or fear of safety, for, fear for safety, will provide answers to the threats posed by these very tools. Tools that, most assuredly, a monopoly of power will have no qualms using to do far more than simply secure you from the minuscule risks to your safety. These same tools that you now support to be placed only in the hands of the government, the state, the coercive enterprise will also be used to control you, to spy on you, to target you should you fall outside of the realm of the normal, the acceptable, and enter into the realm of what they will define as a dangerous person, as a madman. I mean, we see this from non-governmental actors right now. We see what's going on with YouTube and Facebook and other social media outlets run by 
by folks who have a hard time understanding what 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 the nature of 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 free and open uh, dialogue truly is. They are now defining people who have certain views that are outside of their framework, really their framework of preference. They just simply won't own it. But they are now defining those folks as being dangerous, as being mad, as being worthy of silencing. So essentially, by supporting the further monopoly of power by the government, the state, the coercive enterprise, you are supporting easing resistance to aggressive force that the government, the state, the coercive enterprise might potentially use against you for far more than merely protecting you from wannabe spies and terrorists and even nosy neighbors. No, I do not prefer the false security of state control. No, I do not prefer tilting the balance of power even more in favor of the coercive enterprise at the expense of individuals and free associations. I began this article by describing one aspect of the reality of power, that aggressive force is like water. It follows the path to least resistance. Supporting limiting access to drone technology is supporting the creation of less resistive paths for aggressive force to sweep through. It is far better for me to have the power to choose to equip myself to deal with potential threats to my security and fail in that effort than to give the government, the state, the coercive enterprise even greater advantage to apply aggressive force against me even when I have not harmed another person. To put it another way, let me quote Thomas Jefferson who said, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. And that, folks... That's my commentary. If you like this video, be sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel here. It's youtube.com forward slash C slash I state. If you want to find all the other things that I do and that folks do uh, with me, you can go to istv.me and you'll find, uh, including, you'll, you'll, I'm sure this video will be up there uh, if, if you're looking at this uh, uh, closer to the date that this is made, which is uh, August 10th, 2017. Uh, I'm sure you'll see the video up there. If, they, if, if time has passed, uh, <laughs> then uh, you might not see it up there, but you'll see the latest stuff that's up there. So go to istv.me and above all else, on this YouTube channel, be sure you subscribe and hit that bell, that bell, that 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 glorious bell, which is sort of, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's right there. You see it right there? That bell. Yes, you want to hit that bell. Make sure you get notifications when our latest videos are done. I'm Paul Gordon with iState.tv for PG Fire. We'll see you the next time.